Good morning, everybody. Uh, this will just be a little short video, just a couple of thoughts about part of the trailer for convicting a murderer. I will carry on with the next part of reading through the document that uh, Sean Rick shared over a month ago about the uh, the fact that convicting a murderer is a murderer is say that again. Convicting a murderer is basically a docu series about the documentary Making a Murderer. Well, at least that's that, that was his way of putting it. Um, by the way, I'm sure people are wondering, you know, when's, when's it going to be released? Well, as far as I know, it hasn't been sold yet. So until, um, until somebody like Netflix comes along or Amazon and decides to buy it off Transition Studios, then, uh, then it won't, won't get aired. Um, one wonders how keen Netflix will be to um, air a documentary, which um, could at times be critical of them. Um, we'll wait and see. Uh, they've they've certainly put Murder in the Park and White Boy. I've kept calling it White Boy Wick, White Boy Rick. Um, uh, in, in the previous video, it was just White Boy. Um, Sean Rick did a documentary about it. There was also the film White Boy Rick, uh, starring obviously Matthew McConaughey. Um, anyway. Um, so we've got this this trailer to convict in a murder, and I've got it queued up. I'm just going to do um, <laughs> turn away now, or turn your volume down, or turn turn the uh, turn the screen off if the sight of Andy Colburn uh, really uh, is is abhorrent to you, which it is to most people. But I just want to play this little bit of clip from the, 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 the this is the latest trailer. Okay, let me share screen. And so I think we're just going to do literally just. Let's move that out of the way. People were calling from all over the world. One of these days, I'll take you out. I'll get your family. I'll get your kids. Um, surely nobody condones sending threatening message messages to Andy Colburn with regard to himself, his wife, and his kids. Um, certainly, as a lot of you know, I was one of the ones that did phone Sheriff Herman and had at least a dozen long chats with him. And on one occasion when I asked him why he was you know, willing to take my call. He said, because, you know, you sound like a, a reasonable person. You're not ranting and raving. Uh, you're not cursing and swearing. Um, and, you know, no, so, so he was quite happy to uh, to, to take my call. Um, whether he thought at some point he could sort of convince me that uh, making a murder had got it wrong, that it was so biased um, in favour of uh, Dean and Jerry that, uh, that you know, you, you, they really... You really did need to listen to Robert Herman explain everything, and and then you would uh, change your mind. And we do see clips of, I believe it's Dan O'Donnell talking, um, and of course he he did a rebutting the making a murderer, um, and and absolute drivel it was too. Um, but uh, Herman did send me the 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 link to uh, this series done by Dan O'Donnell. Dan O'Donnell. And uh, and after after he'd sent it to me, I said, "Well, I've actually already seen it, you know." I said, "But uh, tell me, has, has anybody changed their mind having watched, um, you know, this rebutting a murder? You know, because there was this this petition at the time for um, President Obama was over half a million people wanted wanted him to take an interest in the case, which he can't because he can only um, interfere in federal cases, and at the moment it's only at state level." Um, and uh, <laughs> he said yes that there had been one person who had um, who had said that they had signed the petition, and now they've changed their mind. I said, "Well, that's great news, Robert. You know, it's uh, it's brilliant that that you've managed to change 
one person's mind. I said, but you've got several million to go. But at least on the plus side, at least Mrs. Herman is now on your side. Um, <laughs> anyway, anyway, we, 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 we had some good banter from time to time. You know, I, I wouldn't deny that. Um, and so, as I say, we don't condone people phoning up, sending messages, abusive messages to policemen. But in our conversations, I never once heard Robert Herman complain about the um, phone calls and messages that he'd, he had received. The only complaint he ever made about the whole documentary was actually the fact that they'd included the Ken Kratz sexting scandal. Um, and at the time he said, you know, do you think that was fair? And I said, well, poss possibly not, because, you know, I don't know what the uh, uh, what all the connections are to the Stephen Avery case are. I don't know know all the significance. Of course, the documentary misses out. This is this is the great thing. It misses out huge, huge important bits of information about Ken Kratz and his sexting scandal. You know, it just wasn't just one victim. You know, I'm with Jerry Butin. I believe fifteen at least. Anyway, um, getting back to Andy Colburn. Um, if you're a proper policeman, okay, <laughs> supposedly Andy Colburn was a shift commander. Um, what he could command, I have no idea. Um, but if you're a proper policeman doing proper police work, you know, locating and arresting proper criminals, I can, I can assure you that you, will, in, in the act of doing your job, having people shout at you, you know, I'm going to get you, I'm going to get your family. Having all kinds of threats is water off a duck's back. It certainly was to Robert Herman. And, you know, to, 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 to police officers, to police officers doing their job properly, it doesn't bother them. They, they, they know it's just the rantings of somebody who, who could be on the other side of the world. They do not take those threats seriously because they are just the rantings of people that are very annoyed, yes. And we don't condone, we certainly don't condone getting in touch with police and speaking to them, contacting them, and being abusive. It, it, it doesn't make, make you look, any, look, look good. It makes you look really bad if you start ranting and raving, raving at people. And, you know, you, you start to make it a personal thing, you know? I mean, uh, Stephen Avery was... Was, was convicted, but it wasn't just because of Andy Colburn. Sure, Andy Colburn had a large part of that. Um, he was feared about his involvement in the civil suit, having been the one that took the phone call that never got reported for eight years. Yeah, sure, he was feared because being called in for a deposition, you know, as I said, when these depositions are being taken, they're, they're looking at all your finances, they're looking at your house, your cars, your money in the bank, your you know, your savings, your or, or your, your pensions or whatever. You know, Thomas Kasurek, he was he was desperate. He was really worried about uh, what was going to happen. You know, checking with his house insurances, all all his different insurances. He wasn't covered. No. Um, so it's interesting, isn't it, that in that clip, we've got Andy Colbert talking about the. Um, the effect of making a murderer and how the uh, documentary, as, as far as he's concerned, you know, has caused all these people to get in touch with him, you know, and it's, it's to garner sympathy for him, isn't it? You know, it, that's, that's what it's all about. You know, he's trying to get a bit of sympathy for the fact that he's had these abusive messages. And as I say, I can't help thinking that as a, as a proper trained police officer that would be water as i say water off a duck's back to have those kind of messages you you know i would be far more worried about people locally that you're arresting who then threaten you they're the ones you've got to watch out for not people contacting you from another state or even another country but then and, and i hope this isn't the case in the documentary that 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 you know, talking to Andy Corbin about the case is trying to garner sympathy. And it's trying to say, look, making a murderer 
has has done something wrong by um, making Colburn look bad. I mean, let's face it, he makes himself look bad. Um, and, and I hope that, that the, the documentary doesn't go down the line of, you know, making a murderer, you got it wrong. You, you know, you shouldn't have uh, put together what you did because it makes Andy Colburn look bad and he's getting these threats and it, it's, 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 it's all wrong. You know, it's, it's advocacy gone too far, if you like, you know. Because I would just like to remind people out there that one of the things that you have to be prepared for if you're going to make a YouTube channel, and, and, I, and I saw it, you know, I, I first started following the dude 2016. Um, and by about 2017, I think I'd got in touch with him, but I was constantly commenting on his videos, um, along with uh, Jennifer, who at that time, I think was White Wave, and, um, and, and obviously lots of other people. And you get the guilt of haters. And honestly, some of the stuff that you get as a, as a YouTuber making videos about this case, some of the guilt of haters, they, they try to be so nasty, so obnoxious, so obscene, that they're trying to put you off doing what we do. And you've got to wonder why, you know, when all we're wanting is an evidentiary hearing. All we're wanting is the evidence to be tested. Because if Stephen Avery it really is the lunatic killer that, that the state say he is, along with Brendan Dassey, fine. Let's put the evidence there. Let's test the evidence. And let's, you know, let's put this to bed. No. What they do, they send the, the most obscene stuff. Um, I'm sorry to have to tell you this, but there, there was one there was one guy who famously used to go around trolling on YouTube channels. And I remember once he actually wrote that I should um, this weekend I should kill my wife to put her out of the misery of being married to me and being um, a mental uh, case and got cancer and all this kind of stuff. And the same with the kids, you know, you know, your daughter's a prostitute and, you know, she's doing this, that and the other. Um, and as I say, it's <laughs> again. To somebody that's that's been a YouTuber for a while, you know it's just nonsense. You you, you know what they're trying to do. It's, it's again. It I always laugh it off. It's water off a duck's back. It makes them look really really sad individuals. Um, and, and and as I often jokingly say, you know, I mean, compared with some of the some of the insults I used to get from the dude, you know, and you know they were, um, it was it was easy to, uh, to, to you know just just to relegate that to the back of the mind and you know say oh that that's just nonsense you know um and in fairness the one good thing that youtube does now is they do sense a comment so if you post something and and they deem it not to be suitable they will um they will not post it uh, sometimes i get the notification that something's been posted a comment's been put there click on it and it's gone youtube themselves have censored it um I mean, I've never blocked anybody. Um, well, apart from Scott Yuck. But then, you know, as, as I say, it was just, it's, it's, it's concerning that, you know, you're going to get other people who maybe aren't quite so thick skinned. They're going to read through the comments and then you think, hold on a sec, you know, do they really want to be uh, um, subjected to obscene comments of the sort that, that they used to post? Um, and of course, you know, you, you wonder who are these people who are the guilt of haters? Clearly, they're, they're people who have got a vested interest in trying to keep Stephen Avery and Brendan where they are. Um, anyway, as, as usual, um, let, let me have your, your thoughts and observations. I've, I've got a lot more to say about Andy Coleman, which I want to get to. I also want to do the next part of that um, document, the uh, CMSI document about um you know um documentaries in general um as i say i, I hope that this uh, convicting a murder isn't an attack on making a murderer and that it's um an advocacy piece to try and garner sympathy for the likes of andy corbin 
He doesn't need sympathy. And uh, honestly, it's it's water off a duck's back to somebody that can get up there in court, you know, and and lie under oath. He's not in the least bit worried about threats, uh, threatening messages and phone calls. But as I say, we don't condone that. It, you know, what's the point? It's as soon as you start doing that, you've lost any credibility and you've totally lost the argument. You've, you've lost the plot. You're now a nobody because you've reacted. You know, you've um, you've gone too far. Um, and, <laughs> and that's not to say that there aren't one or two people who rant and rave even on the truth side. You know, um, it's it, it really doesn't um, look good to to get um, you know offensive and certainly not to get personal. You know, when men up people comment about the fact I've got glasses or my hair or my beard or you know the, the room I'm in and and all that kind of stuff it's like you're missing the point you know what what are you trying to do are you trying to knock me off I mean are people that are contacting Andy Cobb and really saying I'm gonna hunt you down and track you down and kill you no it's as I say I never once had any complaints from Sheriff Herman Robert Herman about uh about anybody uh, sending him you know, threatening mess- messages that, <laughs> it, you know, I'll give him credit for that. He he remained calm under any any kind of pressure and uh, and at times quite comical. As, as I said, when, when he when he told me that, um, you know, about the seven searches of Steve's bedroom and he said, it, I know you're not going to you're not going to believe me on this, but you do realize that, you know, some of those searches weren't for several hours. Some of them were, were just for 10 minutes, you know. And I said, Robert, I can tell by the embarrassment in your voice. You know perfectly well. Ten minutes, ten minutes to search that little bedroom. That, that, that would be enough. You could empty that bedroom in ten minutes. Easy. You know, I, I'll grant you the garage. Now, now if they'd have done seven searches of the, you know, of the of the garage and the other the other areas, but you know. Anyway, let's uh, let's call it a day there and let's um um, I, I want to talk a little bit more about these seven searches. Um, you know, why seven searches of Steve's garage, of, of Steve and Avery's bedroom, when there's, you know, there's nothing there to find? I, anyway, let's, uh, let's leave it there. I've got, I've got one or two more things to say about Mr. Coleman. Anyway, thanks for joining. Um, we'll uh, catch you all soon. Bye for now.